whatever Mike won't sing y'all up. Charlotte's here, so he can probably sing out any of Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you this morning, Lord. I want to thank you for the service this far, Lord. Lord, I pray you just uh, touch the pastor as he stands and preaches the word this morning, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone here who don't know you, pray pardon sin, Lord. I pray that you just touch your heart, pull them to this old fashioned altar, Lord, and get them right with you. Lord, I pray you just wrap the head of protection around us as we travel our separate ways, Lord. Lord, be with us tonight as we come back, Lord. Just come and sit down with us and pour your spirit out on us, Lord. We love you and we thank you for the blessings that we felt this far, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just continue to touch us and help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Love you. Love you.
Amen. Well, my, 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 what a joy it is to serve my Jesus. It's good to be here this morning. Good to see you here. Choir sounding good. And I, I tell you, Brother Josh, it's an awesome lesson in Sunday school. Amen. And it was good. And, uh, you know, you, you miss Sunday school, you're missing out. You really are. I mean, it's uh, the kids need to be in Sunday school. You need to be in Sunday school. But we appreciate you being here this morning. Appreciate those in the parking lot as well. Seen several in the parking lot, and uh, we just thank God for them. Thank God for those on Facebook. We got folk that watches on Facebook, and uh, some watch it later. Uh, not, not from here, but we're thankful for them. Give me uh, a couple of announcements. Women Bible Study, Tuesday, February the 23rd at 7 p.m. So remember that in the fellowship hall. All the women come to the women's Bible study then. And uh, you glad you say? Hey, I'm glad I ain't going to hell, ain't you? Hey, but I'm glad there's a whole lot more to it and it's not going to hell. Man, it's been great serving the Lord 30, uh, 30 some odd years. I, I don't even know the exact date, but uh, it's been a while. And uh, I tell you, it's been worth it. I ain't always been easy, Brother Josh. It really hasn't. There's been times, been discouraging times, been times I've, my faith wasn't as good as it ought to be. But uh, there's one thing about it, he's never let me down, and I appreciate him. And uh, we got a song we're going to sing here in a few minutes. And uh, it's been on my heart all morning. I've sung it during Sunday school. I've sung it 
uh, last night when I went to bed. I've sung it all day today. Uh, I mean, it's just it's on my heart, so I got to get it out for it so I can preach. Amen. And uh, if I don't get it out, I may be uh, singing it during preaching. I don't know. It'll be all right, though, won't it? Amen. Whatever God's got, that's what we want, uh, we're want. we for. And I want, I want to encourage, and I, and I posted this morning, and uh, and I know people be careful, you know, and still be careful, and and all that, and, uh, you know, and, and I appreciate our people in the parking lot. I really do, but I want to encourage them to come in. We got masks back there. And uh, you go, you need something from the store, what do you do? You put a mask on and you go in the store. I mean, I mean that's simple, ain't it? And this is more important than, than that. And I know it's, you get stuff in the parking lot. But we got masks. You know, you can put a mask on. We got places you can sit away from people. And, uh, and uh, we, we don't make people come in. But I want to encourage people to come in. A whole lot better in here and out there. Hey, man. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the outside services, didn't you? But, uh, you know, my, my, my fear is people's going to get so comfortable. Convenient. You don't have to dress up. Just come pull in the parking lot, turn the radio on, talk, smoke. Am I, am I wrong? I mean, I ain't saying that's what they're doing. And I hope they don't get mad at me. But I ain't saying that's what they're doing. But I just don't want people to get comfortable. And uh, I'd rather like be in here facing the virus than to be out there facing it. And uh, I'm thankful for how it's come down, and we're praying that God get. If you're waiting on it to go away, it ain't going away. No. No. It ain't going away. If you're waiting for it to be zero, you might as well forget it. You're never going to come back in. And But it's down as low as it's ever been. Only nine active in Yancey County as of last night, and uh, you know, or last week. And uh, most of them have recovered. Amen. That's comforting to know when you look at how many's recovered. They have been death in the majority. Now, all of them's been old people, but, uh, you know, a lot of them's health conditions and all that. But we don't want to, just want to encourage you to come in if you can. Those sitting at home, watch it on Facebook. Don't let it just be a convenience. Not have to get out. You know, come. You're going to be as safe in here as you are anywhere you go. I see people out. I do. I see them out. And uh, they won't even leave their house, afraid they're going to get the virus. But I see them out. They go to all kinds of places. And, uh, you know, so don't let it be a convenience. And uh, we don't make people come in, but I want to encourage you to come. Those at home, encourage you to come sit on the pew. It's different. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm just, just giving you my heart this morning. I just want to encourage you. I ain't saying you have to. I don't want to say you make it, but I want to encourage you to. We can take care of you in here. They wipe stuff down, they keep it cleaned up, and uh, uh, they do a good job with that and wiping the pews down even before every service and, and all. We got hand sanitizer in the back, we got mask in the back, and there's a lot we understand, a lot of health conditions, we understand that. And uh, but I want to encourage you, if you can at all, try to come in because it's been pretty good. And we got a good crowd here, and all spread out, and we're thankful for that. Hey, God's been good to me. Amen. God's been good to me. Through it all. Through it all. God's been good. Hey, better than good. He's been better than good. We love him. And uh, he gave his life on Calvary. Brother Josh, you said it well this morning. He went to the cross. He died for us. He paid the sin debt for us so that we don't have to go to hell. How much more should we are to live for him and try? Hey, the love of Christ. You know what he said in Corinthians? The love of Christ, Brother Steve, constraineth me. You know what that word constraineth means? means to motivate. You know what keeps me going when I think about what he's done? I think about where he brought me from. I think about how he's helped me through storms and all. Hey, I, mean, I, think, about how, I, don't care. I think about that, and that just motivates me. just want to do that much more for him. Amen. God is good. Brother Mike's going to come, and, and uh, we're going to receive the morning offering. Let's everybody stand. And, uh, you know, I just want to encourage folk. I, I do. That's all I'm doing. I ain't, ain't mad. I want people to come, whether it's parking lot, wherever. But I just want to encourage you. Can it all try to come in and get in on the service. Amen. Brother Ryan, ask blessings on this, will you? Give me some ushers.
333. Some glad morning when this life is o'er I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore Bars that's flown, I fly away. Appreciate the Lord being good to us. If you got your Bibles, you can be turning to Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. <clears throat> we'll try to get rid of this off our heart, so we'll preach. Amen. I wasn't ready for that, no way. I'll turn it on, though. In the mess of this old world, Sometimes I just need a word from heaven that everything's okay. I try to walk by faith, but sometimes I'm so afraid. And I cannot see how God can make a way. But then I think he's never failed me. Never left me, not one time have I cried out. In my voice he has not heard, never failed me. He won't start today, he will make a way. He's never failed me. As broken as you feel, oh, your troubles, they are real. And I know you feel that God has forsaken you. But child, don't lose your faith. He is working while you wait. So just hold on. He will bring you through. He's never failed me. Never left me. Not one time have I cried out. In my voice he has not heard, he's never failed me. He won't start today, he will make a way. He's never failed me. Amen. Amen. Have your Bibles. Turn with us to the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Josh, he got on this this morning. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's some good stuff. I tell you, you want some good stuff? 
Right there it is. Genesis to Revelation. Amen. It's good. And uh, we do appreciate the Lord. And we do appreciate each and every one. I want to begin reading in verse 31. We're not going to read a whole chapter. May go back and, and look at part of it. But we want to look, uh, begin reading at verse 31. You know the, the story of David and Goliath. And David is, uh, the, the Philistines were in a battle. They were in a battle against Israel. And they were like a valley in between. You got uh, the army of Israel on one side. You got uh, the Philistines on the other. And every once in a while, there would be this giant come down in the middle of the field and challenge the people of Israel. Now, he's, uh, I, I read about his armor. His armor weighed 175 pounds. He was nine foot nine tall. His spear weighed over 32 pounds, and he was covered with brass. So when he come out and he walks out there in the middle of the valley to the children of Israel, they're thinking, you know, oh, there ain't no way we can take him. Hey, they, they looked at him. They looked at his armor. They looked at how he was, and all he done was defile the army of the living God. He made fun. Work, send us a man. Bring somebody out here. And, and uh, let's just see. If you, if you can beat me, I'll, I'll tell, I'll, you can do, win the battle. Well, uh, we find that it made Israel afraid. The Bible said when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Hey, they would hide themselves. Uh, but there was a little uh, boy, a shepherd boy, uh, out there watching the sheep, and his daddy goes out and says, I, I want you to go take some uh, stuff down to your son or brothers and check on them. And David left them sheep, and, and he went out, and he went, and he finds them, and they're all uh, gathered together, and he's, uh, they're standing around uh, just talking. You know, here's the huge stuff, and they're talking about I don't know, maybe the sons or brothers are asking what's going on at home, and uh, maybe he's asking what's going on here. We find them, they're just standing around talking. And then the, or, this Philistine comes back out, and he begins to make that same threat, just like always. Hey, they, the difference is they somebody that's not looking at him, they're looking at their God. Hey, they're not looking at the armor that he's got on. Hey, they're not looking at uh, his brass that he's wearing. They're not looking at his nine feet, nine, uh, nine inches tall. They're not looking at all that. David's not seeing that. He's seeing an enemy that his God can take care of. Hey, we find on over there, and we're going to read it here in a minute. We find where David, uh, you know, uh, he begins to put that armor on. And, uh, you know, Saul, can you imagine putting, Saul was the shoulders above everybody. And Saul wasn't man enough, I guess, to wear his armor out there, so he takes it and he puts it on David. You know what I picture in my mind? I picture how David, he's a little ruddy feather, he's little. Here's his armor hanging off of him. I can picture that in my mind. But David takes it off and he says these words, they've not been proven. He said, I'm not going to wear that. And now, when he says it ain't been proven, in, and, and all, he ain't talking about his stripes. He ain't talking about the, uh, the rock and the leather thing he throws with. He ain't talking about that when he's talking about being proven. But I believe this, he's talking about God. He's talking about God. And I want to preach this morning on this thought. I think I'll just go with God. Hey, we find, let me begin reading in the book of 1 Samuel 17. And when David were, words were heard, David, you know, uh, Josh hit on it earlier, how that David uh, inquiring about this, and, and uh, you know, and his brother said, uh, I know the naughtiness of your heart, I know all that. And David says, what well, have I now done? Is there not a cause? But David said, and the words were heard, David said, uh, uh, you know, he's ready to take on the giant. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him, and David said to Saul, I let no man's heart fail because of him. I, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, 
Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I caught him by the beard, high by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. The, the ser thy servant shall sl uh, slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he is defiled, the army of the living God. And David, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Hey, you notice one thing you don't read there? You don't read about his sling. Hey, you don't read about his shepherd's pack on his side. That's why I say David wasn't saying I, I, I've tried all this. And I used to use that when I preached. I'd say that. that David's going to use what he's always been proven. But he don't mention that. But he does mention his Lord. Amen. Hey, and David, I, I notice, and David, moreover, and Saul armed David with his armor and put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded his sword up, uh, upon his armor, and he arrayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these things, for I have not proved them. And David then uh, put them off, and he took his staff in his hand, and chose his five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in the scrap. And he slain where it was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. We're going to stop reading right there. Brother Josh, you pray with us, will you? Yes. It's God great. Amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning. I think I'll just go with God. God's proven himself down through the years. Uh, David has, uh, I mean, David has seen him work in days gone by. So David said, I'm not, I, these ain't been proven. I, I believe he's saying, I'll just use what I've had before. Now I asked you this morning, this ain't part of the message, but what has the devil ever done for you? What has the world ever done for you? Give you a hard time? Hey, done that? Hey, but David said, I ain't going to uh, use uh, uh, what I ain't been proven. He didn't know about the sword. He didn't know about the uh, armor that he had on, but he did know one thing. He knowed about God. I'm glad I know about God, don't you? Oh, listen, I, I want you to look at this, and we'll finish reading it here in a minute. But I want you to notice the, uh, when David, he left, and he went to, uh, the, uh, to the armies of Israel. There was some things he found out, and that was disappointing to him. Now, I want you to look at a disappointed find. Here's army of Israel, and they're hiding. Notice how while he's there, Goliath come out, calling for Israel to send out a man to fight. And Saul and all is was dismayed and greatly afraid, and no one would fight. Well, how would you like if you go over to Iraq to the army of, of America and they're afraid to fight? Wouldn't be good, would it? And they're not afraid to fight. Steve's been there. He's seen it. He's been there. Hey, but can I tell you, David said uh, when he got there, he seen Israel. Who was afraid to fight. There was a hid uh, uh, probably up somewhere. And all they could do was look out and look at life as you come out. And probably looked around at one another. You want to go? Why don't you go? I ain't going. Why don't you go? I can saw pictures. They went around to each one. 
maybe looking at each other. Who's going to be? Ain't going to be me. Hey, the one that should have been out there was the one that was a shoulder high than all the rest of them. That was Saul. Saul didn't even have his armor on. He had it laying on the side, no doubt. Hey, Saul, but he had, uh, was disappointed. I believe he was disappointed uh, when he heard Goliath uh, uh, defiling the army of the living God. And I believe he was disappointed even more when Israel wouldn't go out and fight him. Hey, notice, and uh, we'll get, get into a little bit more. Hey, hey listen, I, I, I don't want to uh, be a, a setting buyer to you. 